in this show, I'm going to do some analysis on the VMware on AWS. I think there's a lot of confusion about what this means for the future of technology, in particular how enterprise IT could use it. Let's get into it. So VMware on AWS, I think, is a really quite an interesting development. I think the key to understanding um, how VMware on AWS works and what VMware is structuring the product to be is to understand how it fits into the overall vision. Now, I was fortunate enough to attend VMworld last week, and um, this slide was put up during the keynote. And what it's trying to say is that VMware sees themselves as any device, so they have the uh, thin client stuff, they have the mobile device management, they want to be able to manage any application, whether it's a traditional monolith in the usual ways, whether it's a cloud native, you know, the Kubernetes containers, the Dockers, or whether it's a SaaS. So if you're using a SaaS service from somebody like a Salesforce or, a, you know, those sorts of tools, Office 365, they still want to be able to get their um, control over that to be able to offer the enterprise a unified vision. Now, then what they're also saying is then to run those tools over any cloud, whether it's a public cloud, a private cloud, or some, and, and the network in between. So if VMware's got that vision, how's it going to execute on it? Because, you know, really obviously that is not where they are today. And let, let's be honest, I don't want to, you know, eulogize VMware here, but um, Cisco or HP have done a pretty bad job. They've all um, expanded visions like this and then executed very poorly. But I think it's important to understand that all of these companies understand that private clouds and public clouds are where customers are going, at least in the short term. You know, we, we yet to see how much of uh, private cloud will move to public cloud. But if you look at this survey, and I'll put it on the screen, uh, cloud adoption is actually very high. So survey of VMware's customers show that 77% of them are using a public cloud in 2017. 97% are using or evaluating, so that's basically everybody. Now, whether it's ES or PaaS, you know, I, I, you could question these results, and I sure would. 97%, this doesn't mean that 97% of people are in Google Cloud or in AWS. It means there's something out there in an ES or a PaaS. A lot of people would be using vCloud Air. A lot of people would be on some one of the other ES clouds. Uh, the IBM one, for example, would be, you know, soft layer, or there's plenty of, of private public cloud hosting where companies, have, resellers have moved into this space. But so to rectify it, as you can see in the last statistic here, workloads running in the public cloud is just 6%. So not a whole lot. I mean, considering all the hype and the magic, enterprise has actually moved just 6% of workloads of the people who surveyed then uh, responded to this survey. Not a whole lot. Okay, so what I think this means is that VMware has a sense that momentum behind the public cloud is large enough that they have to react. They have to do something. Uh, it's not enough to just put your head in the sand and pretend that it's not going to go. And then I think um, it, it's instructive to see what VMware is doing here. They're embracing the concept of uh, the public cloud is there, therefore we'll go to meet the challenge. And in fact, what we'll actually do is go right the way into it. So if you're going to be any cloud anywhere and you're VMware who has a private cloud, you know, infrastructure as a service solution, then if you can go put yourself inside of AWS, that's a really perfect idea. Your existing product needs minor changes and you can go and dump it there. Now, think about the thinking that it takes for a billion dollar IT infrastructure company to do that. Say, we are going to go into the heart of our enemy, if, if, if you want to take a look at it in that way, and we're going to put our core product right in the middle of AWS. Now, that's a really um, strategic shift. That's a really, uh, it's, it's, it's not a disruption, I don't think. It's a fairly, but it is innovative in the sense that it's 20% better than they were before they did it. Disruptions, of course, is two or 300% or more change in the industry. So let's compare what other companies have done just to put this into context. Companies like HPE have sold off their legacy assets, moved them outside the wall, taken their legacy software divisions, got rid of some of their legacy hardware, deprecated some lines, so the company can reconverge around hardware. So that's what HPE's done to embrace the enemy. And now they're starting to get bigger, they're making acquisitions into the right places where there's a future, a long-term future for their business. One strategy. What Cisco's done in a lot of ways is actually put a moat around its business. So by doubling down on hardware dependent, software defined, literally making custom switches for their software platform, they've kind of put a moat there so that it makes it harder for customers to leave. That's a perfectly viable business solution. It's a, 
the way many custom companies react. What you're trying to do there is say, well, if the public cloud is going to take that business, we'll increase the price of our business so the customers who are using it um, give us more revenue to replace that which is lost. That's a perfectly standard response to disruption. You know, for the time being, Cisco is making exactly the money that it needs to. Its investors are happy. Um, and Cisco in particular is very uh, susceptible to revenue loss. Uh, its share price almost directly matches its revenue. L VMware is doing something different. They're embracing the change and they're actually moving forward. Now, this slide here talks about VMware Cloud on AWS, and it's an overview. And I think there's a bunch of really interesting aspects to this which you sort of realize. The first is that VMware on AWS is literally VMware on AWS's silicon. You get their servers, they, have, they use AWS's network. When you click on the Create button, you get four servers. A minimum that have all the instances. It spins up with the vSphere ESX hypervisors you get. The NSX is a standard. The vSAN is what the storage array that's built. So it's not an external storage array. You're not using S3 storage or any of that. You're using only VMware software on AWS hardware in AWS's data centers. And as you can see here, you get all of the tools or most of the tools. I'm not sure if you get absolutely everything and I don't think VMware even knows at this early stage. You get the Realize, you get the Power CLI, you get the vCenter server which manages it. Uh, and then also you get, of course, the, the key tools, ESX or vSphere, you get vSAN and NSX. And then because it's on-prem with AWS, you then start to be able to have access to all of the AWS services. Now, I think the real value here at the moment is that um, you, you compare this to what they've been doing with the vCloud Air network or what, uh, you know, which is partners setting up uh, their own versions of these clouds in colo facilities and hosting them for customers, or you look at what SoftLayer is doing uh, just after the VMware Cloud AWS announcement, uh, VMware went on to announce a, an enhanced partnership with SoftLayer at IBM, and I believe they're doing the same thing with uh, one of the Chinese players, I think it's Huawei, I, I could be wrong there. Um, so what you're seeing is that VMware is kind of putting their software, they're keeping their product, their values, and dropping it right inside of AWS. Now, um, you, I think that this is very clearly part of, uh, uh, there's a pitch that was consistently made both in the keynotes and in the after press sessions, which is clouds are the new silos. So the way that um, VMware wants to position it is, if you're going to be using AWS, enterprises have been very clear that they want to use a multi-cloud strategy. Unlike many startups, they're not willing to double down. I hate that term. Uh, but they're not willing to go all in with Amazon. I hate that too. You know, it's so much cheesy language in IT, really. They're not committing exclusively to AWS or committing exclusively to Microsoft Azure. Their long-term strategy is maybe to test the waters with one, but they don't want to be stuck with custom services from one or the other that don't translate. So they're backing off. Um, to just use the functions that matter. So VMware would say, and in this slide they talk about clouds are the new silos. And even, you know, rather bracingly, they're actually pointing themselves as a silo because they're not um, that open either. So, but what they're saying to people is, we want you to journey to a new IT model, right? So if you believe that sort of pitch, you need to understand that <clears throat> um, you need to understand that there's a multi-step thing. So VMware on AWS, it's more or less uh, one of the interesting things. Three, two, one. So let's come back to VMware on AWS and try and wrap this up pretty quickly. More or less a single price covers the full infrastructure stack of servers plus the suite of VMware software that does the whole thing. I've heard numbers of around a minimum buy of around $40,000 per month to buy this. So you're looking at roughly a half a million dollar spend per annum just to get in the door. My guess would be is that VMware is doing this to keep the price high. They're not bringing it low. They want customers who have large enough teams to be able to learn and adapt and have the skills to be able to do this. They may come down in the future, but what Enterprise IT has learned um, recently is that the old ideas of selling cheap and bubbling up from the bottom is very difficult, and what they now do is price high and sink low. Uh, this new strategy was sort of built out of um, a number of different transitions in the industry. What it means for you as a customer is don't rush into this unless you've got something that you want to do straight away, because you can expect the price to decrease later, and if you lock in contractually, I think you might get locked into a higher price. Now, VMware is using AWS hardware with their software on top. In effect, it's a complete data center. And so many of the people that uh, I spoke to about this said, what you, one way to think of this is that you've just bought a complete redundant data center. And because the um, VMware on AWS includes all of the uh, data recovery, the backup data center features, it has the DRS and all that sort of stuff, there is some merit to that. That is... Um, you could actually start to have a VMware cloud in your private data center and this VMware on AWS becomes your backup facility or your DR facility. 
I'm concerned a little bit about bandwidth, you know, how much bandwidth can you get between two data centers to be able to get the synchronization, but maybe you could pick out key uh, functions in your enterprise and start using this as a, a backup data recovery facility. Very interesting idea. And that might be a way for people to get started, dip the water in, have the backup, test it, validate it, so forth and so forth. So um, the product is fixed, you can't have it your way, you have to take it as is. So if you don't want vSAN, you want to put an EMC array, the answer is no. Uh, if you want you know, some sort of e exclusive customization that's unique to your private cloud, no. That's just not supportable. You can't have hundreds and hundreds of installations in managed by a team and have all those customizations in place. You have to take what you get. Um, there are some limitations to date as they work out the kinks in the platform. I sort of, uh, in, in discussing with various people in the press room and then with executives, VMware sort of feels that there's something going on in the public cloud, but they don't know what it is. And this is consistent across all the vendors. They don't understand how to react to public cloud. And nobody actually is certain of the, the direction that they're taking in the future. And I've talked endlessly about the shotgun approach where we'll do one of everything and see which one sticks. And then later on, we'll reorientate around that. So there are some limitations to date. They've limited the scope. They've obviously had a number of problems. And, you know, um, they did start talking about this kind of like a year ago, and it's still not ready. It's still only out for early beta testers. It's definitely not for a protection. And I do find it difficult to accept that the vendor itself who makes its own software can't make its own software run on time and on budget. And I think that's very telling. I've criticized enterprise IT vendors a lot for very poor quality of their software, their ability, inability to produce reliable, bug-free, simple, you know, things that actually work, right? And they can't even do it themselves. And maybe there's a lesson in there for VMware to consider if they want to improve their product strategies, make it so that you can deploy it yourself. How can we do it if you can't, right? In summary, VMware and AWS, it uses all of um, AWS's hardware. You get the package that you have to have. You don't get a choice about um, what it is that you want. It's a way of extending your data center into AWS and there are a number of customers who want to use specific AWS services like S3 for storage and uh, Lambda for some serverless for, you know, they want 10% of their stuff to be on serverless and that sort of stuff. So it makes sense for Amazon to meet their customers where they're going rather than try and hold them back and extract revenue from them until the critical point is reached and, you know, maybe or maybe not. I think it's, it's worth embracing. You do have to accept the limitations. Don't rush into it. It's a fixed price. It's not cheap but it's cheaper than building a backup data center. Um, I think, Ada, on the whole, I think that VMware on AWS is actually a pretty good move. It's smart, it's not for everybody. You need to be smart as a customer about buying it, and I hope this has been helpful to you. I'm Greg Farrow from the Packet Pushes, and this has been some analysis on VMware on the AWS. Thanks to VMware for helping me to get to VMworld, and uh, what a privilege it was to see some more. I've got some more analysis coming up. Uh, around the VMware announcements, I want to talk a little bit more about the NSX and I want to talk more about their cloud services, which is an overlay that goes over the top of even this. VMware and AWS would report up to a manager which would manage all the clouds. So don't, uh, don't keep tuned. Uh, hit the subscribe button below and I look forward to seeing you soon.